Hello everyone and welcome to another video on Python programming. In this video we will continue our discussion on object oriented programming. In an earlier video you might have gone through the introduction into OOP. In this video we will continue that discussion on OOP with inheritance. Inheritance is used to describe the relationship between two classes wherein one class takes the methods and properties from another class. In this relationship we have something called the base class or the parent class from which we will derive all or sum of the properties and methods and the class which actually derives these properties and methods is known as the derived class. So you can think of the derived class as a specialized version of a base class. To explain what inheritance is in a basic way, I will show you uh, an example where I'm creating a cylinder class which is going to be a subclass of the circle class that you might have encountered in the earlier video on OOP. So what we're going to do is create a cylinder class that is a subclass of circle where we're going to get the attributes radius and get area from circle class and we're going to add the attributes height and get volume to the cylinder. So right off the start you can see we have our class circle that you might have seen in the earlier video. So this class circle has the familiar initialization where we are supposed to enter a value for a radius that gets stored in self.radius. Now we also have a description string which basically is a uh, dunder method that uh, returns a string when we invoke the print command on a particular instance and we have the get area method as well now if we move on to the cylinder class you can see that i'm defining this class with the class keyword with the cylinder name but you can see that i have added a parenthesis and within it i have mentioned the name of the super class that i want the cylinder class to be a subclass of so this is how we actually define a subclass in uh, the most basic way. You enter the name that you want and you enter the name of the superclass that you want the subclass to be a, a subclass of in parenthesis right after the name. Now next if you move on to the dunder initialization, um, the initialization is very familiar, familiar except now we have another attribute for height which has a de default value of 1 just like the radius. So this basically means that we have an option of entering two different attributes for our cylinder instances. Now if you see here there's a line which says super dot init. Now this is like um, this is a command which we use to invoke the super classes initializer. So anytime we create an instance for cylinder we also want an initialization for the circle method as well as a part of our cylinder instance. Next you can see that um, much like how we stored self, uh, I mean the radius attribute in self.radius, uh, we're also storing the height attribute in self.height. Now even this uh, cylinder class has an str uh, method to return a particular string if we use the uh, print function. And uh, finally we get on to uh, a more, uh, a new method that we have defined only for the cylinder class called get volume. Now um, if you see the get volume, it returns us basically the volume of um, the cylinder that is being described in the particular instance for which we enter the height and the radius. So if you can see here, uh, what we basically added extra is an, a height attribute and another method called get volume. And the other parts of um, the circle superclass such as radius and get area are also going to be a part of cylinder even though you do not explicitly see them anywhere here. And we will see how. In, uh, in the form of an example that's coming up. So let me just execute these classes now that that's done. I'm going to create an instance for cylinder. I'm going to store it in CY1 and I'm going to pass 1.1 for the radius and 2.2 for the height. And once that is done, let's just print um, to invoke the str method. And as you can see, the str method basically tells us the information that it's a cylinder with radius 1.1 and height 2.2. So now let's print what is the value we get when um, we use the get area method. Now it's important to note get area was not explicitly defined in the cylinder subclass, but it's a method that is a part of the circle superclass. And we can see that we can actually access methods that are part of the superclass simply by um, accessing any other method. So if you use a dot get area, you can see that we get a value for the area of uh, so the cylinder. So this basic, this area is uh, basically the area of the circle face of the cylinder, uh, the top or the bottom. Now let's use, now let's invoke uh, the subclass specific method, which is the get volume method in a similar manner. As you can see, just by uh, doing invoking this method, we get the volume as well. Now, um, if we want to see what is the radius and the height, we can just do a simple print statement followed by cy1.radius cy1.height and it gives us both of these values as you can see here. 
Now over here, what I'm going to do is create another instance of cylinder, but I'm not going to pass anything for radius or height. So basically it's going to take the default values for radius and height, which was one and one respectively. So once I print, um, this is good. This statement is basically going to print the str method or whatever we stored in the str, which is basically the description of the object followed by what is its radius and height. Uh, this method will give us the area and this method will give us the volume. So once I execute this, as you can see here, this is what we get. And uh, this is what we expect as well. So uh, now in this example, what I'm going to show you is uh, now I'm going to go back and I am going to create another instance for circle now. This is the super class, of course, and I'm going to give it, and since the super class has only one option, uh, one attribute that we can enter, which is for the radius. So I pass 3.3 .3, and I'm going to print what, what happens when I just print, uh, this instance. It's going to basically give us whatever was, uh, a part of the str method. Uh, after that, I'm going to print is instance. This, this is basically a check on whether C1 is an instance of this class circle. And next I'm going to check if C1 is an instance of its subclass cylinder. Now when I execute this, you can see that, uh, well, this is what we, uh, this is the str method that gets printed. But if you see here, um, you can see that it says C1 is indeed a, an instance of circle when it says true over here. But when we look at the next line, is C1 an instance of cylinder? It says false. And this is obviously because um, a superclass object is never uh, an instance of a subclass object. Well, as, whereas vice versa, it would be true. Now, in the next part of this video, what we're going to do is look at the different types of inheritances in Python. So there are basically five types of inheritance in Python. There is the single inheritance, there's multiple inheritance, multi-level inheritance, hierarchical, hierarchical and uh, hybrid in inheritance. So we will go one by one and see each of these examples. Starting off, we have the single inheritance. This is simply where we have one base class and one derived class from that base class. So this is a simple uh, single inheritance. And in this example, you can see I have a class called country where I have a method that I've defined called show country, which is basically going to say print. Uh, this is India. It's basically going to go print this every time we invoke this show country method. Then we have a class called state, um, which derives uh, from the super class called country where we have a method called show state which is going to say print this is state every time so you can see i created an instance of the class state and uh, um, through that instance i can access the super class and the uh, subclass methods over here next we have the multi-level uh, sorry multiple inheritance and this is when uh, a derived class contains more than one base class so uh, let's look at an example to understand this so if you can see here i have a class called student with uh, two methods defined called uh, method one and method two. In method one, we can pass uh, two attributes, SN, SNO, or I think it is, this is supposed to be like uh, an ID, I guess, like SN number, and we have S name. So this is basically two attributes we can pass um, that are probably descriptors for a student. And um, in the next method, you have uh, basically uh, two print statements, which says student number, and then they will print the student number, and uh, it will also print the student name. Um, next, we have a class called marks. This is also, um, so these, these two classes are basically what our super classes are going to be. And we're going to derive a third class from these two. So this uh, second class is a class called marks. And we have two uh, methods. Again, one method is called set marks, which has um, the option of putting in two attributes, M1 and M2, both uh, representative of the two marks. And we store them in self.mark1, self.mark2. The second method is uh, put marks which is uh, going to print the marks, um, namely mark one, and then it's going to tell us how much uh, marks are there in the first uh, subject, for example, and another print statement doing the same thing for um, the second subject of mark two. Finally, we have a third class called a uh, result, which derives from two classes, marks and student, as you can see here. In my parenthesis, I've passed in marks and student. Both are super classes and uh, our uh, class result is going to derive from both of them. This is an example of multiple inheritance. And within this class result, I have uh, two methods uh, specific to this uh, derived class called calc, uh, wherein I'm going to basically calculate the two, the total marks of um, uh, the, the total marks, which is basically the addition of mark one plus mark two. And I'm, then I'm going to have another method called uh, put total, which is going to print me what is the total. So if you can see here, I've created an instance of this derived class called uh, result. And I'm storing it in R. Then I'm going to access uh, method one, which is obviously a method from the first super class called student. Um, and I'm going to store, okay, so this is, uh, name is, I guess, lucky and he has 60 marks. 
secondly, then I'm going to do our set marks, which is the method from the second superclass, which is going to set the marks uh, respectively. So you have lucky student and his ID is 60 and he has got 50 and 60 marks respectively um, in say the first two subjects. And uh, finally, I'm going to access the uh, derived class method called calc. So this is going to do the sum. Uh, finally, I'm going to also do our method two, which is um, going to print our student number and his student name. Next, we're going to have put marks, which is going to tell us the um, what are the individual marks uh, for mark one and mark two. And then finally, we're going to print the total marks with the put total. So once I execute this, you can see here it says student number 60, student name lucky. Marks one is 50 as I had written here. Marks two is 60 as I passed here. And then total is 110, which is basically 50 plus 60. Our next type of inheritance is called multi-level inheritance. Now multi-level inheritance can be assumed as where you take a super class, let's call it A, and you derive a class B from that class A. Now what if we derived a class C from B and we kept doing this? So until say a class E. Now each of these steps is uh, in its own an inheritance, but this whole relationship can be described as a multi-level inheritance. So um, let's take an example again. So I've, this, this time I've defined a class uh, called student where I have defined two methods called set stud and uh, put stud, or you can uh, call it set student and put student. In my first method, I have two options of adding two attributes. Again, this is the student number, this is the student name. In my second uh, method, I am going to print what is the student number and what is the student name. Finally, uh, so sorry, next we have another class called marks, which derives from the first uh, class called student. Uh, this has two methods called set marks, where I'm going to again get the option of adding two um, integers for M1 and M2, um, which is going to represent mark one and mark two. And finally, I have put marks, the method which is going to print mark one and mark two. Um, Finally, I have another class called result. And this, if you see, um, this derives from marks. Now, if you see this relationship, you'll notice result derives from marks, whereas marks itself derives from student. And this is an example of multi-level hierarchy. And uh, even as a part of this third class, we have its own uh, methods called calc and put total. Um, calc will calculate the total as we had seen earlier and put total will basically print that total. And we're going to do a very similar operation. We're going to create an instance of this third class uh, result and store it in R. Um, then we're going to do basically, we're going to set the student details, uh, his uh, student number and his name. We're going to give him his marks 50 and 60. We're going to calculate what are the total. We're going to say, okay, now put the details of um, what is the student's number and name. We're going to also store, enter, I mean, display his marks, mark one and mark two. And finally, we're going to display the total marks. So let's execute this. And if you see, um, it's basically the similar operation that we did earlier. But the only difference is in the earlier example, our, uh, our third class result was derived from marks and student together. Um, so this was an example of multiple inheritance. Whereas in this example, the result class derives from marks and marks itself derives from students. So this is an example of multi-level inheritance. Finally, we have, um, sorry, not finally, uh, penultimately we have um, as our fourth example of uh, inheritance called a uh, hierarchical inheritance. Uh, pardon my mispronunciation, it's hierarchical inheritance. So in this case, a base class basically will contain more than one derived class. So let's say, uh, look at an example of what we mean here. So I have a class called one where I have defined a method called display where what I'm going to do is I'm going to store self.x is equal to uh, 1000 and self.y is equal to 2000. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to print a statement saying this is the method in class one. And I'm going to say uh, after that, I'm going to print another statement saying value of x is uh, self.x, which is going to be 1000. Uh, then I'm going to have another print statement saying value of y is self.y, which is going to be 2000. Finally, um, I mean, next I have another class called two. This, this is going to derive from class one, as you can see here. And in this class two, I have defined another method called add. And in this method add, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first print a statement saying this is the method in class two. And then I'm going to actually uh, print the result of X plus Y, which is 1000 plus 2000. Finally, I have another class called uh, three, and this is also deriving from one. So if you notice, we have one parent class called one. And from this one uh, parent class, we're going to derive two different subclasses called two and three. So this is an example of hierarchical inheritance. Now in this uh, class three, 
what I've done is I've defined a multiplication method. And what I'm going to do is print, first of all, I'm going to print this uh, when I invoke this method, that this is the method in class three. Finally, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to print the result of X times Y, which is 1000 times 2000. So if you see, I am going to create an instance of two and I'm going to create an instance of three and I'm going to store them in T1 and T2. Now, since uh, T2, I mean T1 is an instance of two, so I can access its methods add and I can access its methods display. So I'm going to use T1.display and even in two, uh, T2, I mean, since it's a class, uh, it's an instance of class three and this also derives from class one, I can also access its method display, but now I cannot access add, but I can access multiply. So if you see here, I access add through T1 instance, since add is a part of class two, whereas multiply is a, uh, uh, is, is a method in class three. So I access it in its respective instance, which is T2. So if you see here, now once I execute this, what you will get is basically, um, the results. So first of all, it will basically display the method from uh, class one, which is a display method, it will display the values of X and Y. And since I've done this twice from two different instances, uh, it will basically show a repetition over here. Finally, I've done the addition. And since this is a, a method in class two, it is going to say as much that this is a method in class two. And then it's going to say X plus Y is 3000. And now multiply is a method in the third class. So it's going to say this is a uh, method in class three, and it's going to tell me what is the multiplication result. Finally, we have what is called hybrid inheritance. And this is a combination of multiple plus multi-level inheritance that you saw earlier. So um, let's again understand this through this example. So we have a class called student where we have a method called set student. Um, again, two attributes we can pass here for student number and student name. Next, we have a another method part of the class student called put student. So this will print us the student number and student name. Next, we have a class called marks and this marks inherits from student. So uh, we have a method in uh, class marks called uh, set marks where we can pass two attributes for mark one and mark two respectively. And uh, as we had saw, seen earlier, we also have a put marks which will display the marks for marks one and marks two. We have a class called practical. Uh, this practical is basically a another super class. If you see here, since this does not derive from anything, it is a super class on its own. And what it does is it uh, it has two methods get practical um, and we can uh, pass an attribute for p1 here and we store that in self.p1 and then we have an attribute for uh, put practical uh, which will print us the practical mark whatever we passed for this attribute in p1 finally if you see we have a class called result now in this result we have we are going to derive from marks and practical. But if you notice here, marks itself is a subclass of student. So this is an example of multi-level inheritance. Whereas since result uh, derives from marks and practical both, it is also an example of multiple inheritance. So if you see, notice here, uh, this is an example of multiple and multiple level inheritance, which is basically what we call hybrid inheritance. And as uh, we had seen earlier, this result class will have a calc method to um, do a total of the marks. Um, in this case, mark one plus mark two plus the practical mark P1. And we have a put total method, which is basically going to print us the total. So now we're going to create an instance of this result. And uh, through this instance of result, we're going to first invoke the parent class method called set student, which is the, the second level parent, basically the student, uh, the student class um, set student method. So we're going to set student here. We're going to say 60 is a student ID and name is Ash. Then we have set marks, which is again the, the, the second level parent, which is a student class um, where we set the marks. Finally, we access this get practical. Now, if you notice, get practical is part of um, the practical uh, super class. So in this, we store the third subject of the, the practical marks 100. Then we calculate the total and we put uh, first the student details. Then we put the individual marks. Then we put the practical marks. And finally, we enter what is the total. So let's execute this. And if you notice, you will see here student number 60, student name and all the basically whatever details we wanted um, is shown over here. So this was it guys for um, our video on inheritance. Again, we will continue with our topic of uh, object oriented programming with the topic of polymorphism in the next video. As always, if you enjoyed this video, do like and subscribe and I hope to see you in this next video.